What's going on YouTube? Just coming back to do a quick video contrasting the differences between a 75 Omega and a traditional 75B action. I've seen a lot of questions in Facebook groups and even on my own videos about the Omega trigger versus the 75B traditional trigger and whether or not you should <clears throat> opt for one model against the other. And the short answer, for those who don't want to stick around and watch it, it doesn't really matter in all fairness. Uh, if you want to impress your friends at the gun shop and spend $400 on go fast parts, the 75B can be refined to a little bit of a higher level than can the Omega. But I promise you, if you're doing any sort of shooting with a purpose, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference uh, when you're under pressure. So we'll uh, throw them on the table, let's take a look side by side and kind of see what the differences are. Well, other than the obvious action comments, what's going on inside the guns is different. There's a number of differences as with the respect to just the outside of the gun. The Omegas are newer and they've had a chance to refine the controls a little bit more than the traditional 75. I need you to put on your pretending hat and pretend that this is another P01. We'll talk about what the differences are as it is. It's, it's a pretty good, uh, facsimile 4-1. So the first thing you probably notice is the hammers are a different shape. The ring hammer in my experience is a little bit more difficult to live with um, than the Omega hammer. Just having that little ledge there on the back of the hammer makes it easier to get to to actually cock single-handed. It's not a big problem on this gun with this type of sight because I can get my full thumb along the back of the slide, but if you've got any sort of elongated rear sight, which is really what you want, then this hammer works a little bit better for that in my experience. The other items uh, that are different, as you notice, the rear sight's different. Uh, the Omegas generally will come with a better rear sight than the traditional 75s, which come with this. It's metal, but it's not a really great rear sight. Uh, the controls have changed on the convertible models. This is the decocker model and it comes with uh, a forward swept decocker as opposed to on the traditional P01 which have the rear swept one. And where that matters to me is because the rear one, if you can pretend, kind of the hinge point is about the same point but it comes to the rear. And so where I flag my thumb on the slide, it rides right on the decocker and it's not comfortable. Whereas with this one, my thumb pad rests right on the decocker like it was a manual safety and it's not in the way. The other nice feature is the controls are ambidextrous. So lefties can have that issue or have the uh, decocker on the side that they need as well. Um, the trigger shapes are the next point to talk about. Obviously the traditional 75s uh, will come with either the silver re uh, recurve trigger or the black SP01, like very deep recurve trigger. That would be what's on a traditional P01 and um, it really all comes down to personal preference. A lot of people like flatter triggers. There's a whole aftermarket that goes after these flatter trigger shapes. But um, I'm used to these triggers. I don't mind them either. It took me a while to get used to this one, but now that I'm used to it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the trigger pins is another one. This is very minor detail. and I don't know if it's good or bad yet because I haven't had to replace the trigger return spring in this gun yet. But the, uh, the trigger pins that come stock in the 75 actions are roll pins, which are not great. Whereas this comes with a solid pin, so that might be nice. I don't know. And as far as the exterior, uh, external features are concerned, that's pretty much it. And we'll take them apart and let you see down in the slides. All right, third time's the charm. Uh, on the first take of this, my tripod crapped the bed. Then my kids started shouting for me. So here we go. I know a lot of what I'm talking about now. All right, on the left you have the traditional 75 action, on the right you have the Omega action. So the biggest difference is going to be the trigger bar, which is double-sided. You can see it riding inside the frame there, on both sides of the frame, uh, up to this sear cage, which will lift out if you pull the uh, safety on the pistol. This whole unit will lift out and it's filled with very small little fiddly parts, uh, very small springs, etc. You can see that the ejector is a piece of the sear cage and is held in place with the uh, firing, or excuse me, the manual safety. Whereas you come over here on the Omega, you can see that the trigger bow only comes up on the right side of the frame. The decocker or manual safety actually uh, holds in place a spring. I'm not sure of the names of the parts, so forgive me. It holds in place a spring. Um, the 
firing pin block lifter is is a different shape it's kind of like a quarter circle on the traditional 75 action it's I don't know, it's like a, a figure nine type shape when you lift it out of the frame from the pictures I've looked at. And you'll notice that the injector has a slot kind of machined into the frame, so it's going to go around and hook under your safety, and be, there's a notch, so it's held in place by the safety. So that's really kind of what comprises the actions inside the frame. The trigger return springs, as you'll notice, are pretty much identical there. And... Um, that's about it for what's going on inside the frame. Inside the slide, you'll notice that the firing pin block on the traditional 75 is kind of this weird half circle square shape, whereas it's a traditional circle right there. They're in slightly different spots. The, the block sits a little bit further forward in the Omega than it does over there in the traditional 75. The barrels are going to be pretty much identical. The recoil springs are going to be pretty much identical. And that's, that's really about the extent of how the actions work. So finishing up, we're going to have to do this selfie style. Uh, final thoughts on the 75 versus the Omega. In my experience, it really doesn't matter. The general character of the trigger is the 75 is going to have a nicer double action out of the box, whereas the Omega is going to have a slightly nicer and lighter single action out of the box. The double action will stack on the Omega a little bit more, and it can be lightened with reduced power hammer springs and an extended firing pin just like the traditional 75 action. Uh, you can get race hammers for either gun to lighten up the single action brake even further, although on the Mega, like, you're probably not going to get very much lightning from a hammer, I would imagine. It's already pretty light on the brake, so um, if you go that route, I don't know how much good the hammer is going to do for you, although people swear by it. Uh, the reset, the swing forward on the trigger, you can fit a disconnector on the traditional 75 where you can't do that on the Omega. So if you're somebody who really wants to just brag about the quality of their trigger at the gun store, then the 75 action is going to be the one for you because the reset is going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit nicer if you put $400 of parts into it approximately. Uh, not sure how this can work, but we'll see if we can show the reset kits here uh, and then send you on your way. All right, so first we've got the PO1. There it is, and there's the release. So there's a little bit of creep in the single action trigger. This is a bone stock trigger just for the double action and the sake of completeness. Pulling on it, okay, it stacks real bad right here and creates kind of a fake wall, and you just push through it and it drops the hammer. It does take some getting used to. I suspect I only got about 300 or 400 rounds through it so far, and I suspect it will continue to smooth out with use. But my intent is to keep this pistol uh, stock completely stock, and it'll be my only CZ that is, and go forward. I do like this trigger shape; it's pretty good. Let's look at the traditional. All right, so fair warning: this does have the SRS2 Cajun kit in it, so the swing forward should be reduced slightly. But you'll see that it's not really. It swings out about the same, but the curved trigger shape makes it look like it's not swinging quite as far forward as the other one. So there it is. It's got a, the 75 action has a clear defined wall in single action, whereas it's kind of a lighter rolling break. And you can see a hammer kind of camming and wiggling there with the traditional before it breaks. And the double action is a little bit smoother. I need to finish polishing this one. It's still a little gritty, but uh, it's also a pretty nice trigger. Um, I don't feel the need to finish the action job other than the springs and extended firing pin on this one with the short reset kit from Cajun. So that's it guys. Appreciate you spending some time with me. Uh, as always, ask questions in the comments. Love communicating with you guys via comment. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Action. And Whoa. Firing pin block, which is like an exploded circle, whereas on the right it is a neat circle.